This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Welcome to Silent Voices, February 2016 News Magazines. Here you can get all the child welfare happenings in the news and social media. Welcome. Today we're going to start things off with another letter from the mailbox. This comes to us from victims of Judge Gardner's Facebook site. Yes, another victim of Judge Gardner's, but this one has a happy ending. So let's, let's read the letter that we got. Just wanted to share that I have been fighting for my kids from Judge Gardner in Kent County for over a year now. Once I was able to get on the birth certificate, she refused to send my kids home. My children were in foster care and they were getting ready to terminate the mother's rights. The courts failed to make me a respondent or prove me unfit in any way, shape, or form on two different occasions in the past year. I filed with the Court of Appeals and I on October to see if they would overturn Judge Gardner's ridiculous ruling and send my kids home. Well, we won. Our boys will be home in a matter of a couple of weeks. I will be able to change their last names. I know of at least one other father in the same shoes as me fighting against Gardner right now. Have faith, keep your head up. Good things will come in God's time. And that's from a victim of Judge Gardner. Not only did he save the children from foster care, but he saved the mother from having her rights terminated. If you'd like to share something on a program, or if you would like to be on a program, you can write us at miparentalrights at gmail.com. Again, that's miparentalrights at gmail.com. Let's go to this month's edition of Michigan for Parental Rights, Wall of Shame. Angel Lane Place died on September 17th in Colorado after her foster mother, Sydney Danielle White, admitted accidentally dropping the 11 month old girl and shaking the child violently while holding her by the neck. Why did the infant girl end up in foster care? She had been taken from her biological parents by Mesa County Human Services because the girl's mother said the couple fought and Angel's father smoked marijuana. White told police that on September 15th, Angel went on a crying fit and would not stop. White then held Angel by the neck with both hands and shook her multiple times, according to the police. The 20-year-old, who described herself to police as out of control, shook the baby by the neck and wouldn't stop until one of her own children saw what she was doing and pleaded with her, Mommy, stop it. After the shaking incident, Angel Lynn Place went to sleep and would not wake up for her nap. She was rushed to a hospital, but was unresponsive. The baby was removed from life support on September 17th. Sydney Daniel White, you're on the Michigan for Parental Rights Wall of Shame. Oh, I wouldn't want to have my picture hanging on that wall of shame. Let's go to our news anchor, Wendy Jenkins, for a look back at the February 26th child welfare news highlights. Here are the news headlines for February 2016. 
Overseas, there was much excitement last week over an academic study showing a huge increase in the number of newborn babies being seized by social workers. This was up from 2008 more than 150 percent. A federal judge ruled that the Texas foster care system is unconstitutionally broken for nearly 30,000 children, saying that kids rescued by one of the largest protection agencies in the U.S. often leaves custody in worse shape than before. A woman who used the internet to take in unwanted adopted children faces years in prison after a federal jury convicted her on charges of kidnapping and transporting a minor across state lines for the purpose of engaging in sexual activity. Nicole Eason, 37, was charged after a 2013 Reuters investigation exposed an illicit network where parents offered children they no longer wanted to strangers they met online. A child welfare case manager charged with trafficking heroin and methamphetamine on the side has been removed from her position. Florida Department of Children and Families officials confirmed. Cleopatra, 42, worked with Empower, a child welfare organization. In Connecticut, the state's Child Protection Agency failed to respond to serious risk to, Terryville, to a Terryville toddler who was exposed to her mother's lengthy history of drug abuse and erratic behavior. They also rejected a request by Plymouth Police to investigate the family less than a month before two-year-old London Rain Sack died of an overdose from her mother's prescription. In Flint, state officials insisted that the water supply was safe, even though they knew an unusual number of children had suffered lead poisoning, according to a scientist who helped blow the whistle on Flint's water crisis. The state of Oregon has agreed to pay $15 million to settle a federal lawsuit filed on behalf of nine children abused by a Salem foster parent. The payout is a record for wrongdoing by an Oregon agency. Christians around the world are planning to stage peaceful protests outside Norwegian embassies to call for the release of five children who were seized by Norway's Child Welfare Services for supposedly being subjected to Christian indoctrinization. The protests will be held more than a month after Barnevriet, Norway's Child Protective Services Agency took away five children from the Norwegian Christian couple Marius and Ruth Barnerio. A New York family is turning to Facebook to try and find triplet boys who were given up for adoption in 1972. Christina Wilcox posted on her Facebook page, and I quote, My name is Christina, and I'm searching for my triplet brothers, born my March 9, 1972, in Dodge City, Kansas. We believe they were delivered by Dr. Arnold Baum at Trinity Hospital in Dodge City. My parents were forced to give up the boys for adoption, through Catholic charities. The triplets are supposed to be kept together but may have been separated. They would be 43 years old now. My parents ended up marrying and are still together. Our family is searching. If you have any information, please contact us at christiansearch3 at gmail.com. Their mother, Cynthia Bush, was 16 years old when she became pregnant. She was sent to stay with an aunt in Kansas until she gave birth and then an adoption was arranged by Catholic Charities. Two Abilene Child Protective Services employees resigned after the agency learned one of them had an inappropriate relationship with the father of a 22-month-old girl who died from apparent neglect. In addition, two other local CPS employees have been disciplined for not reporting what they knew of the situation. Patrick Crimmins, Texas Department of Family and Protective Services spokesman, said CPS specialist Tiffany Gann, one of the employees to resign, was involved in an inappropriate relationship last fall with Thomas Kaffeek. Kaffeek is the father of Tamron Kaffeek, who died August 28th of apparent dehydration and malnutrition. In Indiana, a judge noted that only a year ago, Indiana had 15,000 children in foster care. Well, this year that number has risen dramatically with reports ranging from 19,500 children to as many as 21,000. Officers on December 17th literally took a 14-year-old boy kicking and screaming from a home where he was staying with his older brother until a new foster home was found for him. 
The boy kept saying that he was not going to another foster home, and he did not understand why he could not stay there with his brother. The caseworker reportedly explained to police the brother was 19, but DFACS required there be at least a 10-year age difference between family members for them to be able to stay together. A Hancock County woman says her two children, ages 1 and 2, were sexually assaulted and contracted gonorrhea while they were in custody of the Hancock County Department of Human Services, according to a lawsuit filed in U.S. District Court. Alexandria Fay filed suit against the State Department of Human Services, Hancock County DHS, County DHS employees, Tequila Hall and Harmony R Raphael, the children's foster parent, Erica Weary, Watch Me Grow Learning Center, a daycare the state has a contract with to provide care to foster children. CPS kidnaps three children after a loving family seeks medical help. For a family in South Dakota, initial concerns for their newborn's health ultimately cost them everything. The two parents went to pick up their three children from daycare, and when they got their newborn home, they noticed a cut on the newborn's tongue. The, children, the child was taken to Stanford Hospital in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. After looking over the newborn, the doctor decided to call Children's Voice, a child abuse nonprofit organization. It didn't take long for CPS to get involved. All three of their children were seized. Norwegian Child Services had begun the adoption process for five children who were seized from a Romanian Pentecostal family in November after concerns were expressed about the, about the parents' Christian faith. An 18-year-old in foster care is planning to appeal after a juvenile court judge once again ruled he can't own a firearm. James Edwards is fighting to get the court to overrule a decision made by Utah Child and Family Services, his legal guardian. Residential treatment agency Youth Villages has decided to close psychiatric treatment program at one of its Oregon campuses. The Lake Oswego location was the subject of a long-standing DHS investigation and state officials found inadequate staffing, repeated sexual contact between minor aged residents, reports of a staffer hitting a child, and inattentiveness to a suicidal child. A Green Township man and former Gettysburg area teacher and foster care provider will go to trial Tuesday on allegations he sexually abused a young boy. Robert Carroll Bonebreak, Jr., 68, is charged with involuntary deviate sexual intercourse, attempted involuntary deviate sexual intercourse, indecent assault of a person younger than 13 years old, and endangering the welfare of a child. A Bloomfield Hills mom says her daughter was medically kidnapped. Child Protective Services has forced 17-year-old Liliana McMichael to live in Oakland County's Children's Village. CPS is accusing mom of failing to give her proper medical care. A Pueblo mother will spend seven years in prison for the death of a two-year-old foster child who died while under her care. The sentencing hearing comes nearly a year and a half after the death of the two-year-old who was in the process of being adopted by Sarah and Paul Finn. A 14-year-old San Angelo boy is missing just as his brother was in April. Christian Perez whose brother Daniel, 15, was found dead of presumed drowning in the Concho River after a three-day search, fled Child Protective Services custody while awaiting transport. Miami-Dade Judge Michael Hansman called it a cockfight. The video he was describing in a court hearing last week shows two 11-year-old two foster children beating each other up in the middle of a circle of boys after a Children's Home Society of Florida, CHSFL, employee allegedly instructed the pair to go ahead and fight it out. A husband and wife in Sarasota, Florida have been accused of child abuse after they allegedly told authorities that they routinely tied up and locked their adopted 12-year-old daughter inside a playhouse. Police allege that Eugenio Equaga, a doctor and his wife Victoria, a lawyer, used zip ties to restrain the girl's ankles and wrists before locking her inside the cramped enclosure for hours on end. The State Child Protection Agency trampled on the rights of a Connecticut couple 
by removing two children at birth based on perceptions and stereotypes of the parents' mental health, a lawyer told Federal Appeals Court Thursday. Lawyer Andrew O'Teal of Hartford was arguing on behalf of Joseph Watley, 61, and Karen Haseman, 47, who claimed that their rights under the Americans with Disabilities Act were violated when the State Department of Children and Families terminated their parental rights. DCF removed the couple's two children at birth, Joe Jr. in 2005 and Danny in 2006, under a controversial doctrine, under a controversial doctrine known as predictive neglect. And those are the headlines for February 2016. Lots of news highlights, and those were just the tip of the iceberg. Maria, do we have our taken of the month? Well, Dennis, this is Melissa Daigle's daughters, Hannah, age 10, and Kayla, age 12. They were taken from Phoenix Children's Hospital and placed into DCF custody. Melissa was accused of medical abuse and eventually Munchausen by proxy. This occurred immediately after Melissa disputed a GI doctor's actions at the hospital because her daughter Hannah was forced to fast for 21 days without nutrition. The same doctor had been fired prior to their readmittance to the hospital and before DCS was called. Melissa took action to have this doctor removed from her daughter's case and that care team at Phoenix Children's Hospital after she had to admit them again for complications. But PCH insisted the fired doctor oversee the two girls. DCS was called shortly thereafter and the girls were removed. Both girls have long-standing, well-documented, and extremely complex medical histories. The girls share numerous medical conditions, all diagnosed by medical professionals, including gastroparesis and autism. Kayla suffers from primary amyodeficiency syndrome, and Hannah was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy. <clears throat> It is believed the reason the girls were medically kidnapped is because of the rare form of mitochondrial disease the girls suffered from, congenital disorders of glycosylaxin selection. There are 100 types of congenital disorders of glycosylaxin. Some are so rare that there are only 30 in the world. And these girls are in custody of the state of Arizona. You can find more pictures of Taken by going to the Facebook and searching slash Taken. I'd like to take the time now to do a little treading on Facebook. Every day on Facebook. Can Here is a screenshot of one of the award winning foster mothers from the state of Virginia. And this is what she had posted on her Facebook page. It says, Happy F New Year. I am so F pissed. One of my foster kids without a driver's license took these Jeep last night and had an accident. It's in bad shape. Cops did not arrest, but I want to kill her. I don't know what's going to happen, but I hope 2016 is going to be a better cause. 2015 really sucked. I'm done being nice and helping ungrateful people. Well, we here at Silent Voices also hope that you are done fostering. Uh, with a potty mouth like this and wanting to kill your foster child, <laughs> it certainly doesn't set a good example. Hey, can I get a Facebook like for that? All rise. I don't like my parents take me to church three times a week. Since when is church attendance considered to be harmful? They make me go to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I'm tired of them telling me what to do. And this makes you feel isolated and depressed? 
I'm prepared to sit here all night until you agree to opt our son out and give us parental notification. That's all we're asking for. Because parental rights are not written down in the text of the Constitution, it's up to judges to define. Stop. Enough is enough. I was angry that they dared to even place this in the hands of my five-year-old son. Dave, where'd you get this? Jake had it at school. Why? I didn't know. Um, I didn't know what other discussions had taken place. And they teach this in kindergarten? Apparently so. In kindergarten? This is about introducing to my child sexuality issues at a very early age. We both decided we still want Jake opted out of these lessons. I'm afraid we can't do that. When I was let out and put in the police car, I thought to myself, how far are they willing to go to deny us our parental rights? This generation has to fight to preserve and protect parents' rights in the Constitution in the United States. One of two people will decide. It will be a bureaucrat or a parent. It's a parent's duty to control and direct the upbringing of that child. These you are are federal guidelines that I have to obey. His mother and I want his lab results. And you do know that you're under no obligation to show the results to your parents if you don't wish to. The only way I can release that information is if your son gives me permission. It's the law. Then the law is wrong, doctor. The international law threat is the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. If that becomes the law of this country, then every parenting decision will go through the filter of the UN's standards for how children should be raised. This treaty that purports to give rights to children really makes children more vulnerable to being exploited and abused. Eric believes that his parents are imposing their religion upon him in an excessive manner. Do you want to have an adult in the government deciding what's best for your child? Or do you want to be in that position? I think once a week church attendance is sufficient for a 13-year-old boy. So be it. You can find our YouTube channel by going to YouTube and searching Producer Dennis Silent Voices. We also have a sister channel with snippets from our show by searching MPR 49424. That's MPR 49424. Let's hear from our friend Baby LK. Statue. 
kid. She's a CPS agent and she's knocking at your door because she's gonna snatch your kids, then she'll take a couple more. We're gonna snatch your kids. CPS agent and she loves her job because snatching people's kids makes her powerful as God. We're gonna snatch your kid. We're gonna take your children. We love taking children. We're gonna take your children. You'll never see them CPS agent and she's always telling lies, but her good old supervisor is her biggest alibi. Yeah, she'll falsify your records, commit perjury in court, then the judge will rubber stamp it and make you pay some child support. She's a CPS agent and she's always telling lies, but her good old supervisor is her biggest alibi. She's a CPS agent and she loves her job, because snatching people's kids makes her powerful as God. She's a CPS agent and she's gonna snatch a kid, then she'll cry about her case while all her failures are all hit. She's a CPS agent and she's knocking at your door, because she's gonna snatch your kids, then she'll take a couple more. We're gonna take your children, we love taking children. We're gonna take your children, you'll never see them. And I want to thank the producers of Baby LK. And I want to thank you, the viewers, for watching this week. You can catch us next week, same time, same channel. Until next week, my friends, remember, your, your voice, voice can, can make, make the, the difference. difference.